is up guys welcome back to another video and today I want to bring you the much requested tutorial and that is how to do a handstand So before we jump into this video, I just want to mention that I am myself and I no means a handstand master. I'm not a hand balancer, but I have some tips and tricks that I think will help you on your own personal journey. Because this tutorial is going to be quite long, I'll be breaking it up into four different parts. If you go into the description down below, you will see jump links to each of those four respective parts as well as links and descriptions of everything that I talk about in this video today. The four parts that I'm gonna be covering is firstly, the wrists, and they're important in balance and longevity of the handstand. The second, we're gonna be talking about mobility and body line, and how important this is for improving and perfecting the handstand. The third part, we're gonna be talking about the progressions that you can use to achieve your handstand. The fourth and final part is going to be how do you implement this into a routine? How do you take this knowledge and apply it to your training? Without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. So the first part we're gonna be talking about in today's video is the wrists. I wanna break the wrist down into two parts. The first is preparation for the handstand, and the second is their importance when it comes to balance. When it comes to the preparation for the wrists, it is unusual for all of a sudden our body weight to be pushed through our ankles to then being inverted and pushed through a much smaller joint which is our wrist. It is this reason that we want to prepare the wrist properly when we're doing the handstand to avoid injury and maintain the longevity of the movement. You also want to build strong wrists and forearms to improve your control and stability in the handstand itself. I'm going to recommend to you my personal wrist routine. I created quite an in-depth video on my channel that I will link to as an annotation now and in the description down below that you can follow. The routine comprises of three warm-up exercises, three stretches, and then a novel wrist movement at the end. I suggest that you perform this exercise at the beginning and the end of every single handstand session that you do, although I'll detail more about this in the training segment of this video. Whatever routine you follow for your wrist preparation, just make sure that you do it often and you look after your wrists. They are of the highest importance when it comes to the handstand as that is what you're going to be spending your time on so you want to make sure you look after it. The second part as I mentioned is going to be all about balance. Because the handstand is essentially standing just on our hands the same principles apply to our hands that apply to our feet. When we are stood up and we lean forward our body naturally puts more pressure through our toes to counteract that forward movement. When we lean backwards it puts more pressure through our heels to counteract the backwards movement. The same applies to the handstand. When we lean forward, we want to be pushing more weight through our fingertips to counteract that forward movement. And likewise, when we move backwards, we want to be pushing our weight through our palms. This is kind of the basics of hand balancing. Obviously, the elbows and the shoulders and the rest of the body is going to come into play, but it all really originates at the hands. Once you become aware of this counterbalancing technique, I find that it helps people understand how to balance their handstand a lot faster. The first progression that I'm going to recommend is going to look at building awareness of this hand balancing in particular. The progression is called the frog stand. This is one of the most basic positions that I could personally think of when it comes to balancing on your hands. Unlike the handstand, we're gonna be in an extremely safe body position, but we still get to put all our weight through our hands and also balance our entire body. To start this movement, you wanna start in a squat with your hands in front of you on the floor at about shoulder width apart. You're gonna tuck your elbows into your thighs and simply lean forward until you find that balancing point. All we want to do here is hold this position as long as possible. Try to be aware of how you're putting your weight through your hands and how that is affecting your balance. This is a really brilliant exercise just for building that initial awareness of how to balance on your hands. We want to be performing this exercise for anywhere between 30 and 60 second holds. If you can't achieve 30 second holds, then try and build up to that 30 to 60 second time with many different sets of however long you can hold it for. It might be six sets of five seconds or three to six sets of 10 seconds, etc. I'll talk about this more in the training segment. So now that we understand the importance of the wrist for longevity and balance, let's jump into the rest of the body. As I said, the wrists aren't the end of this story when it comes to balance in the handstand. The rest of the body plays a pretty large role in it as well. There's two main types of handstands. And as Coach Summer says, there is a gymnastics handstand and then there is a fucked up gymnastics handstand. I think what he is referring to here is 
the straight body line handstand, which I guess you could call the gymnastics handstand, and then the all too common banana handstand, which I guess is the fucked up gymnastics handstand. Ideally, we want to be in that straight line body position, although this is pretty damn hard when you first start. However, I do recommend that you train it from the beginning as it will make your life a hell of a lot easier when you get more into the handstand and more into perfecting your perform. There is two common issues with the banana shaped handstand. The first is lack of shoulder mobility. When we're in a handstand position, we want to ideally be in a position where our arms are at 180 degrees to our torso. This means that our hands should be directly overhead so we can maintain a nice straight line in our body. The banana handstand often happens because we lack that overhead mobility, which is all too common with the nature of training that we're doing and the lifestyle that we live sat at desks, on phones, on computers. For this, I'm gonna recommend Emmett Lewis's article in which he describes how to fix the arch back handstand. In this article, he provides a routine that you can use to stretch out the lats, the pecs, and strengthen the posterior muscles on your back to hopefully fix that arch back handstand position. I'll link to the article down below and he provides videos and form advice as well as cues of how to perform each individual exercise as well as the sets and reps that you should be performing. He recommends that you should perform this routine three times a week and I'll explain later how you can incorporate his training into your routine. The next aspect and the reason why we might have an arch back handstand is poor body line awareness. As I said, in an ideal handstand position, we want to maintain a completely straight line, even slightly hollowed. The issue with having that arch back handstand is that we're often putting excess pressure on our lumbar spine and have our hips in an anterior tilted position. When we are in a good body line position, we want to make sure that our core is tight, our back is flat, and that our hips are posteriorly tucked. To achieve this, there is a set of body line drills that I would recommend. To explain this, I recommend Antronik's video where he demonstrates pretty much every single body line drill that you can be using to improve your handstand. Again, it is linked in the description down below. He goes through all the form cues that you need to know and explains exercises such as the front support, the back support, the hollow body and the arch body hold. All of these are gonna be useful for improving your awareness of the body line drill. We don't wanna select an exercise that is gonna be very intense because we're, as I said, we're looking to build awareness rather than just destroy our body. When you find an exercise that you like, we wanna be holding this position for anywhere between 20 and 60 seconds. There is a lot to think about here, which is why I said choose an exercise that you can feel working and just build that awareness. Now we know the basic elements of the handstand. We're working towards a more mobile shoulders, building a body line, building up our wrists. Let's talk about the progressions. So we've already started with one progression that I've recommended and that is the frog stand. Now we're gonna be jumping into the more handstand specific progressions. I'm gonna run through these exercises relatively quickly simply because you've probably seen them elsewhere and they've been covered in numerous other tutorials. And I don't want this tutorial to be 30 minutes long. To make this quick, I'm gonna cover a few form cues that apply to every single exercise that we're gonna be talking about. The first is maintaining an elevated scapula. This means when we're in the handstand position, we want to be pushing as tall as we can through our shoulders. You should feel like you're squeezing your ears with your shoulders themselves, trying to stay tall, keeping those arms at 180 degrees angle, if possible, to your body. To go along with this, we also wanna maintain locked out arms throughout the entire movement. Bending at the elbows is okay to rebalance and moving at the shoulders, but while we're holding the handstand, we wanna be in that perfect form position. Lastly, just like the body line drills, we want to be tensing everything in our body. This goes from head to toe. We want to be keeping our core tight. We want to be keeping our hips posteriorly tucked, our glutes tight, our thighs tight, and our toes pointed. As for the holds and reps described, they are put into a range, and that is because I wouldn't recommend holding the progression for any less than the bottom of the range. This is because we're looking to accumulate quality time in that hold rather than just simply doing the hardest progression. Now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's jump into the exercises. The first progression I'm gonna recommend is the elevated pike hold. In this, you simply need to find an elevated surface like a box or a bench to place your feet on. We're gonna start with our hands at that shoulder width on the floor, place our feet onto the elevated surface and move into a position so that we stack our torso over our hands in that nice straight position. Obviously we will be bent at the hips, 
but we're looking here to perform essentially half of a handstand using our feet to assist us. If you're struggling to get into this position, then you know you need to work on some shoulder mobility, like myself. Perform this exercise for those 20 to 60 second holds, or you can move in and out of this position for 10 reps and hold the final rep in that stacked position for 10 seconds. The next progression is the wall plank. This is basically moving closer to that inverted position. Instead of piking at the hips, we're gonna be trying to maintain a straight body line position. We wanna start off with, in a plank position with our feet to the wall. We're then gonna walk backwards and try and walk ourselves up the wall. This is just trying to get used to that overhead inverted position and build some strength in the shoulder girdle. Go as high as you feel comfortable moving. We wanna aim for being about 45 to 60 degrees of our body and trying to maintain a good straight body line position. Go for holds of between 20 and 60 seconds or perform five reps moving from the plank position as high as you can and back down again. The next progression is where I recommend that we start introducing some kick-ups into handstand and try to get more comfortable with kicking and being a little bit more free in that inverted position. Whether you just find a open piece of ground that is somewhat soft like grass, gymnastics gym, or just a matted area, and just attempt to kick up into a handstand. We want to be trying to focus on the form cues that we mentioned before, but the point here is getting more comfortable in that inverted position. It can be useful to have a friend or use a video camera to figure out where you are and if you're kicking up enough. I recommend that you perform this for anywhere between 10, 10 to 20 attempts at kicking up into the handstand. Next, we're gonna move on to a progression that requires you to be able to kick up into a handstand, and that is the wall-assisted handstand. The easiest variation of this is having your back to the wall, and the harder variation of this would be having your chest to the wall. So to start with the back to the wall handstand, we're gonna place our hands at 30 centimeters ish away from the wall and kick up into our handstand using the wall to assist us. The closer we move our hands to the wall, the harder this exercise is going to become. When holding this exercise, try not to fall into the bad form cues of the banana handstand. Try to maintain that elevated scapula, pushing as tall as you can for your shoulders. Having a slight arch is unavoidable simply of how we are balancing ourselves against the wall but try to make that arch throughout your whole body rather than concentrated in that lumbar spine. With the chest to wall handstand, we wanna be starting in a similar position to the wall plank, starting in that plank position and walking up into an inverted position. Again, try to start with your hands about 30 centimeters away from the wall and move them closer to improve the difficulty. Having your hands as close to the wall as possible is actually a fantastic drill for drilling the body line when you get to a more advanced level. Again, we wanna be holding this for anywhere between 20 and 60 seconds, focusing on maintaining good form. The final progression I'm gonna be covering is the wall-assisted handstand leg flutters. In this, we can either use the chest to the wall or back to the wall handstand that we covered earlier. We're simply gonna kick up or walk up into that handstand position. We're gonna get comfortable and then we're gonna take one leg off the wall to follow a straight line with our body while the other leg is still assisting slightly. We're then gonna try and take off that assisting leg to match the straight leg and balance in a freestanding handstand briefly. We will then drop back onto the wall and repeat and we'll be repeating for the hold time as mentioned. Where possible, we want to be avoiding falling back off the wall and jumping back on. The idea here is about allotting as much time as possible in that inverted position. The reason this exercise is so powerful is unlike attempting a freestanding handstand where you might have seconds every now and again, we should be in the inverted position the entire time with having the odd second of freestanding. You will find this to be probably the most powerful exercise you use when it comes to achieving the freestanding handstand simply because of that. Again, we want to be achieving that 20 to 60 second hold with as much time as possible in that freestanding handstand. During all of these progressions, I really suggest that you just attempt to do the handstand alongside your training. I will talk more about this in the training section of this video. So up until now, I've covered nothing that vastly different to the rest of the tutorials on YouTube. But the thing that I feel that tutorials on YouTube lack is direction. Knowledge is great, but applying is better. And that is what I wanna to provide to you now by giving you this routine that you can follow to achieve the handstand. Working the handstand into your routine is essential. As Bruce Lee said, long-term consistency trumps short-term intensity. Having a structured and quantifiable approach to the handstand is, in my opinion, one of the keys to success. 
So let's jump into the routine that I recommend. Firstly, the routine that I recommend should be performed daily, although there are two different sides to the routine. One includes some training and the other is essentially a deloaded mobility and wrist preparation routine. The reason for this is that the handstand is a skill and like all skills, it is very neurological. We want to be using a little and often mentality when it comes to training. Rather than doing two 30 minute sessions a week, we'd be better off splitting that 60 minutes over the week and doing 10 minutes a day. But as I said, you need to listen to your body if your wrists, your shoulders or any part of you is sore, then go for the deloaded mobility and wrist preparation routine. I would suggest performing the main full routine at least three to five times a week and then performing the deload or recovery routine on the days that you don't perform the full routine. The full routine is in the description down below as a downloadable PDF. I also list the exercises that I recommend in this video in the appropriate sections in the PDF. So you can just download it and read for it yourself, but I'll briefly attempt to explain it in this video. Firstly, we're gonna start off with a general warm up. The handstand isn't particularly an intense strength move, so we don't need a super intense warm up to get our bodies prepared, but at the same time, we don't wanna be jumping into this cold. Just a general one to two minute warm up will suffice a little bit of jump rope, a few arm swings, which will do absolutely fine. We then want to jump straight into performing a round of my wrist routine. That involves all three exercises and all three stretches. We're gonna be performing this for 10 reps plus a 10 second hold on each exercise and each stretch. Next, we're gonna jump into some shoulder mobilization. There's two ways you can approach it. First, that I would recommend is doing one round of Emmett Lewis's shoulder routine that I recommended earlier in the video. This is a great way just to start opening up our chest and shoulders so that we can get into a better handstand position. But it's not too much work that we're gonna start turning off and interfering with our, our performance. Use the sets and reps described in Emmett's blog post and then we're gonna perform that again just for one round. Next, we're gonna jump into the fun part of the routine and that is handstand attempts. I like to try and make people do handstand attempts where possible. This is why on the full daily routine, I recommend that you just have fun and attempt some handstands for five minutes. The reason I put a five minute cap on here is we could be here all day trying to do handstands, but we'd end up with totally obliterated shoulders and wrists, and that isn't gonna help us with our little and often approach. Five minutes is plenty to get between 10 and 20 attempts in. We don't want to be just madly kicking up into handstands. We want to be calm and considered in our approach kick up into a handstand, try to hold it, come back down, assess where the faults in that lied. Did you not kick up enough? Did you kick up too much? Film this would be useful and assess. Rest as needed between those attempts. We're gonna be performing just one set of five minutes of attempts. Next, we jump into the progression work. We're gonna be performing a pairing of a handstand progression and a shoulder extension exercise. The reason I got the shoulder extension exercise in there is to balance out the overhead work and improve our shoulder mobility. Firstly, you're gonna to want to select a progression that you can perform from the progressions that I listed earlier, anything from the frog stand to the wall assisted handstand leg flutters. As said in the video, we wanna be performing this for anywhere between 10 and 20 reps or 20 to 60 second holds. Again, go for quality, not intensity. We're then gonna be pairing this with the shoulder hyperextension exercise. For an example, this would be something like the German plank, the reverse support hold, or even the L sit. This is just gonna balance out the overhead position and make sure we and try to maintain balance in our shoulder girdle. We want to perform this exercise from anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds. Again, this exercise shouldn't be intense. We're looking to mobilize and balance. You wanna perform that pairing for anywhere between one and three sets, depending on how you feel on the day. We're gonna be resting about 60 seconds between the set of the handstands and the set of the hyper extensions. Next, we wanna jump into the body line drill. Now this could be anything like the hollow body, the arch body, the front support hold, side plank, anything that was mentioned in Antronik's video is what I'd recommend to use here. Like the previous exercise, we want to be performing this for anywhere between one to three sets of a 20 to 60 second hold. Again, choose something that's gonna provide quality and allow you to get an awareness in that position rather than something that's gonna provide intensity. Rest 60 seconds between your sets. Then finally, we're gonna finish up with some more wrist preparation and mobilization. I suggest you do another round of my wrist routine. This includes those three exercises 
as well as the three stretches, both for 10 reps of a 10 second hold on the last rep. Finally, this is where I suggest if you haven't already incorporating in some sort of shoulder mobilization. As I suggested earlier, the Emmett Lewis's shoulder routine is fantastic. If you've already done one set in at the beginning of your workout to mobilize your shoulders, then you simply need to complete another two sets to finish the routine. And then obviously, if you're performing this three times a week, you only need to include this in three of your workouts. But that is it for the routine. If we were to perform a deload version of this routine, we'd essentially just remove the strength sort of element of the routine. And that is the handstand attempts, the handstand holds and the body line position. And instead all we'd have left is wrist preparation and shoulder mobility if it applied. As I said earlier, I suggest doing the full routine as a minimum of three times a week, but preferably pushing more to that five times a week mark. And then do the deload routine on days that you're not training. You've got to play this by feel guys. If you have any pains, then be sensible and take a deload day or a rest day completely if you'd rather. This full routine should only take about 20 minutes to complete and the deload maybe even less. As I said guys, everything I've talked about today is in the description down below. You can download the routine and everything else that I've recommended. If you have any questions about the handstand, then leave them down below and I will be in the comment section answering your questions. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and support the channel, I really do appreciate it. And finally, if you have a friend who's trying to learn the handstand, then I really appreciate if you shared that video with them. But that has been it for today, guys. I hope you appreciate this tutorial. I did put quite a lot of thought and consideration into creating something that I always hope will get people on the way with their journey. But that has been it for today, guys. Have a strong week. Good luck with your handstand journey and peace.